I am an avid manga reader, and ever since I started on the self-improvement journey and becoming more masculine and that kind of thing, I've listened a lot to what Hamza has to say. And Hamza has said over and over that anime is bad, don't watch anime, if you do so you're a Jeffrey, you're a loser, etc. And that may be true. But when it comes to manga, I feel like it's different. Still, the answer may surprise you. So, as someone on self-improvement, is my opinion on reading manga and self-improvement. Now, a lot of manga that I would recommend are manga that have strong characters, themes, all that kind of thing. Basically, something to learn from. And a lot of the good manga out there, if you know about manga, you've heard about Dragon Ball, that kind of thing. Really, if you go onto the internet, you can see the influence of all of these manga. And sure, you don't want to be reading Sword Art Online or something. If you're reading Sword Art Online, you, you're just a Jeffrey, honestly. You need to make sure that you're reading something with an actual point and strong masculine characters and something that really brings value to your life. So don't read Sword Art Online. Kirito is the worst protagonist I've made. <laughs> and don't read any of its million clones either. Baki, for example, has to be one of my favourites. Since Baki is entirely about martial arts and the author is basically just saying martial arts are cool. That's basically the whole point of the series and that's all it really needs. Stuff like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, I mean Baki's mob is awesome somehow, but stuff like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Hirohiko Araki, who writes it, says it's a pie to humanity, talking about the strength of humanity. And even if it is definitely quite campy in parts, there's still a lot of good stuff there. And if you're looking for an action series, it's good, that kind of thing. Now, you'll be someone who's actively online. And, man, this, this hoodie is really warm. You will be someone who spends a lot of time online. And I am in a similar boat. And being someone who's online, and being someone who's been around all the manga-related communities, I've found that... I've actually found a lot of comments talking about the influence that these things have had on people's lives. Like, Dragon Ball or Baki got me into bodybuilding or martial arts. Hajime no Ippo got me into boxing. Berserk and Vinland Saga have just endlessly inspired me to keep on driving myself. And to just keep on pushing no matter what. Generally, a lot of the good manga that you'll find out there actually do push strong and masculine and self-improvement related ideals. And a lot of the people who've absorbed these messages don't even know what self-improvement is. But still, they've just found that these characters, they can relate to. Or these characters have really taught them things. And, you know, you have a whole, he just like me for real thing where people take it way too far. Like, I am literally Rick Sanchez. But, I mean, don't watch Rick and Morty anyway. The first two seasons are good, but still, it's not really teaching you much, is it? Anyway, this is about manga, so I need to stop talking about Rick and Morty. So there are people like Jack's Blade and Logan Chitwood, where Logan Chitwood, his whole entire career is just being a good dad and pretending to be Yuchiro Hanna. And he's actually a good dad, so you don't need to worry about him abusing his children or anything. But then there's people like Jack's Blade, who literally just teaches people about how to train like their favourite characters and promotes fitness and all that kind of thing, and he's not necessarily regarded as a self-improvement guy. But through manga, and I mean, he was motivated into becoming somewhat of a bodybuilder by Dragon Ball. And he's continued to make stuff like Tough Like Platoons and Would That Work Out, where he teaches just the average guy who may just be some massive weeb who reads Sword Art Online or watches Rick and Morty about how they can literally be Goku. And so... You'll be an entrepreneur if you're on self-improvement. If you watch Hamza like I do, you'll want to be an entrepreneur. And you can argue how good I am at doing this, but still. And just those two guys have made whole careers out of just being related to manga and anime, but also health and fitness. And even the series that don't necessarily have a really strong characters will still have strong themes that you can learn from. 
maybe my favourite series is Assassination Classroom. I have all 21 books over there. It's the first manga series I ever got. And its themes are that you aren't necessarily defined by who you are or what roles you have assigned to you, and that also a strong teacher can really bring you out to be your best self. And it doesn't matter whether that teacher's online or in person or what, but generally if you have someone who is in the position to teach you things to the best of their ability, and they're not just some person who's slaving away to get a wage like a lot of modern teachers will be doing, someone who genuinely cares about you and the subjects, like Hamza for example, or just a lot of people on self-improvement, then you can become inspired to become your best self, because you are the average of the five people you spend most time with. If you want to learn more about how the characters in manga have actually motivated me for self-improvement, then you can go to my most recent video, either on my channel or I'll put a link in the description, about how you can get out of the rut and the self-improvement relapse using those kind of characters as motivation, or just anything as motivation. Alright, plug over. Now, I was re-watching a Hamza video a few weeks ago, and it's one of his older ones, and it was about sleep. And towards the end of the video, he explains that for years and years before you go to sleep, you think about stuff like RuneScape or Minecraft and what he was going to do in the day after. And he wasn't even aware that was a practice, but then he goes on about how escapism and fantasy have actually been proven to help people fall asleep. And one of the constant things that he recommends is reading for an hour before you go to sleep. Because it helps you to wind down and all that kind of thing. You're not on your phone just being a degenerate and watching TikTok or something, I don't know. But what surprised me is that self-improvement books, where generally I'll read something like How to Friends and Influence People or Atomic Habits before I go to bed, is that it kind of takes too much processing from your brain. So, if I'm journaling or something, then fair enough, you can plan out what you're going to do the next day. But, if you're there, and you're trying to wind down before you're sleeping, then thinking about heavy topics like self-improvement may actually not help at all. It may actually delay your sleep, and sleep is an integral pillar that really does determine everything. So, what I came to realise is that reading manga may actually be a good way to help yourself fall asleep, and I did used to do that from time to time, but I wouldn't do it all the time. So, I'd recommend reading manga before I go to sleep. Because it's sheer escapism. You're immersing yourself in fantasy and characters and lands that aren't your daily life. And you're just observing them. Now, it doesn't have to be manga. It can be just any kind of fiction novel or just, like, reading in general. But as long as you're not really reading something too heavy, I do actually believe that Manga is one of the best things that you can do before you're sleeping. And of course, you can also have manga as part of your schedule, because if you're on self-improvement, then you're more than likely going to want to develop a schedule where you plan out everything that you're going to do in the day, or at least you're going to plan out some stuff. And if you're going to read manga, then I'd recommend that, since it's escapism, it's fantasy, it's all those things, I'd recommend that you plan manga into your schedule. And I did find that a very good time to do that is when you're going to sleep. Or at least, I tell you that you need to put it after you've completed all your work. And if you're going to go to the gym, or if you're going to take a cold shower or something, or if you're going to journal or meditate, or you still have work in your business to do, or any of that kind of thing, I would recommend that you plan manga after that. Because otherwise, you're going to get carried away. And I've done this plenty of times, where I've gone and just sat down and thought, okay, well, I'll just read something for a bit, you know? And then I've been doing that to procrastinate, and I put stuff off, and then in the end, I've ended up wasting time that I should have spent on actually self-improvement. So, work manga into your schedule. Now, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have a fair bit of money. And if you're on self-improvement, again, you're going to want to be an entrepreneur. So, more than likely, you have a fair bit of money. But the truth is that to buy a book, it costs you money. So, you kind of want to make sure that you can afford it. Because most costs around £5-ish. 
But then there's stuff like Seven Deadly Sins, which just for some reason costs £10. It costs double the price for no reason. Now, of course, it is very easy to lose yourself in these characters, because I've found time and time again that I've been there just reading Baki and thinking, how cool would it be to just be Baki Hanna? But then I've distracted myself from self-improvement in the process. So you got to make sure that you're not getting carried away being one of those he's literally me for real for real guys where you're on about how much of a sigma male you are and how you're entering your villain arc when actually just not really doing anything and of course it does kind of carry over into anime and video games a lot of the time well anime more than video games but what's important about manga is that it's not hyper stimulating like they are where it doesn't really involve as much participation from you while you're not there thinking "Ooh, pretty pictures but you're there just reading a book full of still images and text. It really doesn't have as much of a capacity on the brain, but also I find that it usually isn't as addictive. I mean, you can get carried away reading manga, but it's usually not as addictive as when I get distracted watching about four episodes of Hajime no Ippo in a row, because there's about 70. Like, I still watch a fair bit of anime, and when Baki Hama Season 2 comes out, you already know that I'm going to be watching that. But what I've found is that manga is a good tool to help yourself to distance yourself from anime a bit. Because like TV shows and movies in general, it's a lot more stimulating. And luckily, I'm already as far away from video games as possible. I don't really play games anymore. The other day, I actually thought, you know, I may need a bit more balance. I'm going to play Team Fortress 2 today. And just never really got around to it. It may feel impossible, but... If you just keep on disciplining yourself, like anything, it always passes. Soon it just feels like absolutely nothing at all, you're just absolutely fine. And manga I do feel is a good tool, since if you just get yourself to sit down and read, then that's gonna, well, probably take more time, but it's also just gonna distract you far less, and you're gonna get more invested in that than getting carried away watching anime and that kind of thing. I'm not going to be one of them guys that makes excuses about finding a balance. I get that I'm being a Jeffrey by going and watching Hajime no Ippo or watching Bakihama season 2 when that comes out. But I do find that manga is a good tool to try and gradually distance yourself away from it. And no, just because you're reading Dragon Ball doesn't mean that you get to go and play one of the video games. Come on, you're better than that. Now overall, compared to stuff like anime, I do actually believe that manga is a greatly powerful tool because you're still absorbing all the stories and usually even better artwork because I, mean, I love One Punch Man manga and I think part of the reason why I went against anime to begin with is because of the sheer absolute hell of the animation quality of Seven Deadly Sin Season 3, but I'm not going to go on a rant about that. <laughs> Seven Deadly Sin Season 3, but they messed that up. But overall, I do just believe that manga can actually be a really useful tool. Because just like reading a book, it's only really a visual form of a novel. And it's always good to read. There's nothing hyper-stimulating about it. There's not all the different things to try and immerse you into it. Like the sounds and the colours and all that kind of thing. It's just art, really. Manga is art. And compared to a lot of Western comic books that are around... Manga generally have far better characters and themes, in my opinion. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions, but generally I just find that manga are of a lot higher quality and a lot more useful to you, especially for someone on self-improvement and you're not looking to waste time. So there you go. My idea of reading manga and self-improvement is that it's better than anime by a long shot, and you shouldn't be playing video games anyway, even if it's based off of manga. But also that it's important not to let yourself get carried away. Because even though there's a lot of benefits to be drawn from it, you just don't want to get carried away immersing yourself too much. And just being one of those fatherless weeb stereotypes where you're just there mindlessly consuming. Because you don't want to be a mindless consumer. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can in the most productive way possible. And if you want to learn the key to self-improvement, the secret that's going to help you to get away from all of these addictions and... All of the problems that you have about being unproductive and lazy and all that kind of thing then i'd recommend that you go and watch my video the key to self-improvement either here or 
here. I don't know if YouTube editing works. I'm just going to assume it's here. If I'm pointing in the wrong way, I'll look like an absolute idiot right now. Pointing at assassination classroom poster. <laughs> yeah, look over there. Assassination classroom poster. I really don't have any better way to spend my money, do I? And anyway, go and watch that video right now. And I hope you dig as well.